Hey everybody, I hope this video is a blessing to everybody who watches or listens to it. It's something that I've been wanting to do for some time uh, to talk about Isaiah 53. Some people call Isaiah the fifth gospel and um, I think that's really appropriate. There's nothing sarcastic about that at all. And Isaiah 53 is uh, just one of the most uh, beautiful expressions of the cross, of what Jesus did for us. And he laid his life down and allowed himself to be nailed to that cross. And um, I'm, gonna I'm gonna recite it. Because the Lord has blessed me with a somewhat of a decent memory. Thank you, Jesus. And also, my, uh, my eyes are not that great, and my reading out loud is not so good. So to spare you from that, I'm just going to recite Isaiah 53 after I play a couple of tunes. Uh, but I'm going to start, I'll probably I'll start the reciting from the end of chapter 52, because you know how the chapter divisions are not inspired. But, uh, and you probably noticed some of you that are familiar with the book of Isaiah, that uh, the description of, of the crucifixion in, in chapter 53 is uh, preceded by a few descriptive verses in chapter 52. I've seen uh, one of the Bibles I've seen said, calls it the suffering servant. And we're supposed to be partakers of his suffering because he suffered for us and um, yeah and sorrowful yet always rejoicing because uh, and I might talk a little bit about Isaiah after that, that chapter a little bit after I read it and before but I think the one thing that just stands out really a lot to me is that verse 3 says that he is despised and rejected a man of sorrows. It doesn't say that he was. It says he is. And that's something that his word is eternal. That's a, a word that he gave to Isaiah that is eternal. That uh, it's true. Just as true today as it ever was. As you know. Um, so many people would not believe it if you told them that Christians are the most widely persecuted religious group in the world. A lot of people don't believe that because it's become so stylish to make fun of Christians. And the name of Jesus is one that hardly anybody is neutral about. Although some people are here in the States uh, that, I, that, I, that I've come across. They just kind of, they'll hear your testimony and you can witness to them and they, they'll just be real happy for you and then thank you for not trying to convert them. Of course, you can't convert anybody. Only God can do that. But um, anyway, and I believed a bunch of, most of those lies until I was about 46 years old. But anyway, and my, my testimony is earlier down, but um, I'm going to start off just from, by singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, in honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for your anointing on this little piece of time you've allowed me to record. I pray, Lord God, that you would, that you break it and multiply it and feed whoever needs to be fed by it and uh, pour out your goodness on anybody who's watching or listens later in the name of Jesus and guide me, Lord, and hold me up because I can't, I can't do anything without you, Lord. So I'm trusting you I'm, and pray this prayer in faith in Christ's name. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing To my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ending Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. 
I will raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of Glory died My richest gain I count a loss And pour contempt on all my pride Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast Save in the cross of Christ my God All the vain things that charm me most I sacrificed them to his blood See from his head, his hands, his feet Sorrow and love flow mingled down did I such love and sorrow me? Or thorns compose so rich a crown? His dying crimson like a robe spreads o'er his body on the tree. Then am I dead to all the world? And all the world is dead to me Were all the realm of nature mine That twere an offering far too small Love so amazing, so divine Demands my soul, my life, my all Hallelujah. God bless you. If you're still worshiping with me, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise God Almighty. Oh my God, he's so amazing that he loves us so much. And that he puts up with us. He's so patient and merciful and kind. Oh my God, Father of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us to be strong, Lord God, in these, in these days of darkness. Hold us up, make us, Lord, I pray for boldness in the body of Christ. Everybody who's listening and watching, I pray for boldness and a faith that would not fail, that would not waver, for strength, Lord God, to endure until the end, that we would pray, always pray and not faint in everything by prayer in the spirit, Lord God, because thou art with us and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, okay. So here is, uh, I'm going to start reciting from Isaiah 52, verse 13, and then go on and, and recite into Isaiah 53. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for writing your word on my heart. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. I pray you write it on the hearts of all who hear this in Christ's name. All right, verse 13 of Isaiah 52. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. 
He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So he shall sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Who has, deli who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we should see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opens not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he's poured his soul out unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you all for anybody who's still listening. Um, love. For God so loved the world that he did that for us. God so loved you that he died on the cross for you and he paid the price for your sins and took all the punishment of your sins so that you might live for him and give you, and he died on the cross, defeated death, hell, on the grave that we might have victory over sin. If we receive him, we'll come to Jesus. We're running out of time. Come to Jesus. <sighs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it would be more embarrassing if I had to blow my nose. If I had not. Oh, come to Jesus. There's no confession you can bring to him that will surprise him. None of your thoughts are private to God. You're always under surveillance of God. Never mind all these tracking devices people are walking around with and all the cameras everywhere, wherever you might live. God is watching and your sin is not hidden. That's why Jesus said, go and sin no more. And by his stripes, we are healed. And when we humble ourselves and come to him and ask him, to reveal any type of pride that's in our heart that we can confess it and that he would take it from us, that we would just confess it and forsake our sin. Because he that, in Proverbs 28, 13 says, that whoever 
covers his sin will not prosper, but he that confesses and forsakes his sin will find mercy. And yes, God does love you, whoever you are, but that doesn't mean he's pleased with you. He's pleased with those who fear him and hope in his mercy. That's Psalm 147, 11. For God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. And fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom because without him, there is no mercy for sin. Without God, without Jesus, without the blood of Jesus, there is no protection from evil. And the fear of the Lord tends to life. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. And they that have it shall abide satisfied and shall not be visited by evil. So I'm just going to worship the Lord with one more song and say, God bless you. And yeah, it's the same tune that I played for When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. It's that doxology melody from an old hymn by Thomas Ken. I don't know if he wrote the melody. I know he wrote the words. But um, to what a lot of people call it, the, the doxology. Most people just know that one stanza. But I'm going to sing a Charles Wesley tune and maybe tack that doxology on the end. Uh, all right. Arise, my soul, arise, shake off thy guilty fears. The bleeding sacrifice on my behalf appears. Before the throne my surety stands. My name is written on his hands. He ever lives above for me to intercede. His all-redeeming love, His precious blood to plead. His blood atoned for all our race. And sprinkles now the throne of grace. Five bleeding wounds He bears received on Calvary. They pour effectual prayers, they strongly plead for me. Forgive him, oh, forgive him, they cry. Nor let their ransom sinner die. The Father hears him pray, his dear anointed one. He cannot turn away the presence of his Son. His Spirit answers to the blood. And tells me I am born of God. My God is reconciled, his pardoning voice I hear. He owns me for his child, I can no longer fear. With confidence I now draw nigh. And Father, Abba, Father, cry. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you all. For for listening to that little miniature service. <laughs> Just a little, church, little miniature church service. I hope it blessed you. God is so awesome. He's so amazing. There's nothing, nothing he can't do. There's nothing about your life he's not interested in. If you're not born again, he wants you to be. If you don't like the sound of it, if you've never heard of that, there's nothing to be afraid of. Like how many of us? Don't if it, if you don't feel like you need a redo, like you don't need to hit reset on some things in your life, I invite you to examine your heart a little further and ask God to show you. But oh, he wants, he's so desirous of you. The reason he laid down his life and died on the cross is because he long, what, what, apart from reasons that only he knows that he found us, he thought we were worth dying for. But he longs and desires to give you a new life and set you on fire for him, that your bones would be on fire with a holy, zealous love for the lost, this lost world around us. 
I pray, Lord God, that he give you, Father God, give these people a spirit of prayer and spirit of intercession. Lord, those that have not been born again, I pray that they would be. I pray that they would come to you with their sins broken, Lord God, that you turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to you, Lord Jesus. That you grant them the gift of repentance. Let them come to you brokenhearted for their sins and receive the gift of forgiveness and cleansing by the power in your precious blood. And that they be sanctified by faith that is in you alone, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. God bless y'all.